So good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. My name is Vishnudat, and you are welcome into the first class of wireless networking absolutely from scratch. So what is going to be the agenda? The agenda is going to be really simple. First, as usual, we are going to break our network or wireless networking problem into multiple pieces. We are going to understand these pieces individually, and then maybe in some class, we are going to combine uh, uh, this wireless networking problem pieces. And believe me, you are going to get the complete picture of wireless networking. Then, as usual, we will learn everything from our curious characters, because if you are not curious, if you are not asking questions, these guys are going to ask questions, okay? We will be talking about wireless networking in an enterprise network. For that, we need to talk a little bit about campus network. There is a difference between enterprise network and campus network, by the way, right? Then we are going to talk about an invisible medium because we are talking about wireless where there is no wire. The medium is going to be invisible. We are so habitual about seeing these Ethernet wire, but believe me, we can send our data over nothing, means over air. Believe me, and we are going to do that. Then we are going to talk about basic requirements of network communication because it is really, really important to understand what are the basic things which we need so that two devices can communicate with each other. Although you all are experienced, you all know about it, but we are starting something new. And I'm, I presume, although maybe you can have experience of 10 to 15 years, but as usual, again, I'm using this word third time, we will be starting absolutely from scratch, okay? We will be talking about this wireless medium and a little bit about electromagnetic waves because these waves are something which we need to understand more. Then we are going to talk about course expectations. And at last, we will be talking about a little bit about the medium, which is invisible. So this is my agenda. And I want to start this class with this promise that if you give me your next one hour and 15 minutes, believe me, these concepts are going to be pretty clear uh, to you. These are going to be very easy for you to understand where exactly wireless networking will be fitting in the complete enterprise network environment. Having said that, let's talk about the first board where I would like to showcase you that how I have broken down the problem of understanding wireless networking into four different pieces. So when I put this hammer on top of this wireless networking problem, Believe me, it gave me just four pieces. We need to understand four different pieces. Number one is the medium, the invisible one, right? And that is where most of the network engineers has some issue, right? Because we don't see anything, right? But we need to understand this medium. And this medium is going to have electromagnetic waves and radio waves, which we have studied in our maybe intermediate or maybe uh, 12th standard. And believe me, most of the most of us. In, in fact, if you talk about me, I have left this topic because it was so intimidating to me to understand these waves. Because I thought that if I don't see them, how I'm going to visualize, right? But believe me, when I was reading everything from the wireless networking perspective, it was so easy. I was able to visualize, and you are going to visualize this invisible medium. Believe me. Once we are done with the understanding of this medium, we will be talking about the standards and protocol because these are important. Believe me, if you understand Ethernet, you know one standard, which is 802.3 or .3. But here we are going to talk about wireless. So there are some different rules for that. There are some different protocols for that, which is known as 802.11. We will be talking about 802.11 also. But I presume that we all understand basic switching. So we all understand 802.3, which is Ethernet. And it is going to be great. If you have this knowledge, 802.3 or .3, it is going to be a little bit easy for you to understand .11. I'm not saying these standards are exactly same. But yes, basic things are still same. So if you know Ethernet, if you know a little bit of routing, the traffic path which we are going to draw in enterprise network, it is going to be easy for you. But believe me, if you do not know switching or routing well, just ping me one on one so that I can enable some switching and routing course from my website so that we all are on the same page. Right? So if you understand a little bit of switching and routing, this course is going to be really easy for you. The third piece, the third problem which I came across where most of the network engineers 
have issue is wireless security. We will be talking about it. And the last thing, because once we understand all this theory, we need some vendor, we need some company, right? On which we can see everything in action or the devices of which company we can see everything in action. So I am great. I'm in great love with Cisco and Cisco's product. And believe me, I, I, I just uh, got a message on my WhatsApp that there was one router, right, in a customer environment who, which was running for more than 18 years. I'm not talking 14 years, right? And that is the stability, and that is the that is the reliability of Cisco products. And that is why I am going to talk about Cisco wireless architecture with 9800 series WLC, which is a wireless LAN controller, uh, which is a wireless uh, LAN controller, right? If you do not understand what is this WLC or controller, believe me, you do not need to worry about it because we will be explaining everything absolutely from scratch. So when you divide, when you break this problem of wireless networking, you are going to get these four pieces, right? We will be understanding these pieces one by one. The medium is going to be the first. Then we'll be talking about standards, wireless security, and Cisco wireless architecture. Once we get all these things, we are going to combine them together to get a complete picture of wireless networking. This is the idea, guys, right? Having said that, let's move to our first board where I will be introducing my character and one enterprise network right here. So most of the time we understand or explain any technology using these two characters. She is Anjali, he is Mr. Rahul, and he, uh, they both are working in a company. The company name is Sports India Private Limited. And they are, they both are network lead. They lead the team of network engineers, right? And a Sports India company is growing at a very fast scale, you can say, right? So what exactly this company has right now? This company has offices, factories, outlets in complete India, all over India they have, right? What exactly they are doing business? They are doing business of sporting goods. They make cricket bat, cricket balls, so many things with respect to football. Whatever you can think about sports, they are making it, right? And that is why the products of this company is in huge demand across India. Okay, Anjali and Rahul are two famous characters are actually Part of this organization they're working as a network lead here and if i talk about the network of sports india private limited this company has a data center nearby to mumbai which is exactly here in india right if you are not from india you can have this map of india that is perfectly fine right and then they have several branches this is in bangalore this is in hyderabad and they have a big campus they have a really huge campus in the capital of india which is delhi Right? Why do they have all these things? Believe me, I'm going to explain you, right? Because this company is growing. Basically, we have lots and lots of users or lots of lots of customers of this country across India. That is why we are, or this is Sports India company is opening all these offices across India, right? And now the Mr. CEO of this company wants one thing from Mr. Rahul and Anjali. And he's saying, Mr. and Miss, uh, Miss Network Lead, right? I want every employee of Sports India should have wireless connectivity. And here is the problem. Anjali and Rahul don't have any idea about the wireless technology. They are pretty happy with the wired one. So what is happening today? Basically, people come to their office. They have cubes there and they have PC there with a monitor. And this PC is connected with the Ethernet wire. and then. Everything is good. They are getting the good speed. But now, Mr. C, you want that my employees can work from anywhere. Means if they want to work from cafeteria or maybe somewhere out in the campus, they should work without need of any cable. And the whole sole responsibility of implementation of wireless across this network is on Rahul and Anjali's shoulder. They understand, believe me, they understand BGP well. They understand OSPF well. They understand MPLS, switching technologies, SD-WAN, everything, right? But here is the problem. They do not know wireless, just like us. We are just starting wireless. So they will be getting the knowledge of wireless from here, and they will be implementing wireless technology in Sports India 
with us right so what is the task here what is the big picture just try to understand we need to implement wireless across this sports india private limited campus somebody said mr vishnu why do we need wireless in data center at the end of the day this data center will be maintained and managed by suppose i am saying this is my data center there are my employees my network engineers who are going to work inside this data center if that is the case if they are working on the data center they are managing maintaining this data center they need connectivity and why do they always have connectivity the wire maybe they will be having their laptop and they we want every employee should be treated equally if that is the case if they go inside this data center with their laptop and they want to access internet and they should have connectivity without a wire right and that is where we need wireless everywhere this is the whole thing mr boss wants to implement wireless networking across but for that we need to understand this enterprise network really well because when as a network engineer i see all these buildings i do not see all these buildings what i am going to see i am going to see routers and switches and you are not going to be comfortable by seeing this building until and unless i show you routers and switches believe me i will be showcasing you the routers and switches in the next board and this board will be changed shortly right and i think you are going to get more comfortable on this picture because i have introduced some routers some switches some firewall mpls internet and now you will be thinking that mr vishnu are these two pictures same previous one and this one believe me this picture is good for anybody who do not understand networking and this picture is actually for those who are good with respect to routing and switching who have seen this enterprise network if you haven't do not worry about it because we are going to understand it from scratch right so both the picture are same right now what i am seeing here we have delhi campus of sports india private limited why we have this delhi campus so when mr ceo start this business in delhi they opened one building in which many employees come and work together if that is the case we need to connect these employees so that they can get the services of internet or maybe they can share files with each other they can they can talk to each other they can collaborate well and if that is the case then basically i will be buying some switches and routers and i will be connecting them as simple as that right right now the current state of this organization is that everybody doesn't matter if he has laptop or the pc they have to use this cable which we call as ethernet cable to connect to the switch and then they are going to get the services of uh, uh, maybe they can share file they can go to internet and so on and then eventually the switch is connected to the router router will be connected to the service provider maybe through internet or mpls as simple as that but mr ceo knows that his products are in great demand across india and that is why he is opening campus or maybe a big site in bangalore he is opening big site in hyderabad also and maybe there are many more branch site i have drawn only 3 but believe me this enterprise is huge maybe more than 300 400 branches are there consider a real company the real company name is decathlon right and i think we all are aware of the decathlon brand we go there we buy the sporting goods there no matter uh, no matter where you are means i am in bangalore i can see many branches of decathlon here you can see many branches of delhi in northern part of india delhi nagpur wherever whatever, whatever you say this is everywhere so this company is just like a decathlon right it is everywhere maybe 300 400 maybe 500 branches are there doesn't matter but the whole sole purpose of these branches are that the employees are going to come here and they will start working right how a user who is sitting on this internet going to order from this company maybe somewhere somewhere in this campus network i have a server where i am running this website which is www.sportsindia.com if that is the case anybody can come from outside using internet and can access this website to order something you all aware of this right but as the network is growing mr ceo doesn't want that i should place all of my server in delhi campus right they have chosen a dedicated facility for that and they have put all of their server in, in, into this site right one maybe one reason may be that this data center or the center of data because we have, because all the data of this company is right there into the servers right and mr ceo has decided that this location this facility location should be somewhere which is maybe closer to everybody 
and they have chosen this location as Mumbai, right? By the way, this is not the only criteria to design a data center, dispense, or equidistant. No, this could be one of the criteria, but we are just understanding this enterprise network from high level. So this data center or center of data is going to have all the servers. Now, doesn't previously what is going, what was happening means if somebody was in Bangalore, he has to come to this campus to access the server. But now the servers have been moved to data center. Now it doesn't matter whether you are in Bangalore, Hyderabad, or any remote branch. If you need to access the server, because of course this is sportsindia.com, the website is going to be managed by engineers of this company, right? And that engineer can be in Bangalore, that engineer can be in Hyderabad, who's working on this application or this website. Maybe there are many more such applications, right? Try to understand this is Sports India is accessed by thousands of customers. It should be scalable, right? And now maybe some employee came to the Hyderabad, they are going to connect to the switch, then the router, and the traffic flow is like that, as simple as that. Doesn't matter if, there is, uh, if it is coming from the remote branch, right? Maybe people like us who like working from home, they are sitting at the home, they can come to the internet and then they can access the server once again, right? Really, really interesting. So this is the whole soul view of an enterprise network. If you are new to this domain, do not worry about it. If you are from wireless, you want to understand a little bit of this routing and switching is absolutely important believe me if you want to learn security if you want to learn wireless believe me networking with respect to routing and switching is the most important thing because this is the base you should understand how the complete network looks like right now the question comes now the question comes what exactly mr ceo wants here Mr. CEO wants that if somebody comes with their laptop here, they should not connect this Ethernet wire. There should be no wire. They can come to Delhi campus and they open the laptop. They will be connected directly to this uh, company's network and they can access whatever they want without any wire. And you must be thinking, Mr. Vishnu, this is not the new thing. We have been seeing this from last five years. Believe me, it doesn't matter if you are seeing this from five years. Just try to think about it. How come my data, right? Just see your laptop, right? Open anything on your laptop. Just try to access google.com and believe me, it is going to open. And there is nothing connected between the switch to your laptop. How exactly this is happening? This is really, really so fascinating. How the ones and zeros, which is generated by your laptop, is going into the air and then eventually reaching to the destination. The destination could be in. United States of America, or maybe in Dubai, or maybe somewhere else. It is so fascinating. But because we have seen, or we have been seeing all these things from last five, six, seven years, it is just, we are just so habitual about it that we do not think about it. But try, I means in a philosophical manner, believe me, just go back to 100 years or 200 years back and try to think that how exactly things are happening. Or maybe you can think it now, right? I dialed a number on my mobile phone. I say hello and preach to anywhere, right? It is one of the best innovations you can see. How my data is flowing over the air. And that is which we are going to talk about it in the next 12, 13 classes. It is going to be really, really interesting. Wired is not that a problem. Why? Because in Wired, we have two devices. We have actually a medium or a physical cable on which we can send data. Although it is again really, really interesting to see how ones and zeros are flowing over this wire. But now you have made up your mind that Mr. Vishnu, it is not a big deal because we can send current over this wire and we can inform that if I send five ampere of current, please computer number B, you understand this is one. If I send zero ampere of current or if I do not send anything, understand this is zero and that is how I send my bits. But the problem of this medium is, the problem of this setup is going to be, I do not have this wire. How I'm going to send this ones and zeros over this air? Who is going to take these ones and zeros from my computer to the far computer? It is going to be really, really interesting. Having said that, now what we are going to talk about it, see, we have data center network, we have branches, but mostly I am going to showcase you a little more about this Delhi campus, right? 
because Rahul and Anjali have decided that they are going to start with the Delhi, camp Delhi campus, right? So what exactly the campus look like? So we will be double clicking or we will be going a little bit inside in this Delhi campus to see what exactly it contains in the next board. And believe me guys, whatever I am talking about here, I know that some people are, uh, are experienced in it, but I presume that in wireless, we are absolutely new, right? So bear with me if you are having some experience, but believe me, after some classes, you will get to know some cool things about wireless. Do not worry about it. Having said that, let's talk about Delhi campus, a little bit more about this, right? So what is happening? In Delhi campus, we have this big building, okay? And in this building, we have lots and lots of users who come here and work. But right now there is no wireless. So what we do, we connect this laptop to this cable and this cable is going somewhere to the switch. And this switch is known as access switch. Why access? Because I am getting access to my network through the switch. As simple as that, right? And now at the second layer, you'd see that if we have lots and lots of switch like this, maybe this building is 18 floor building, right? Every building I have maybe one or two switch, if that is the case, right? If you want to combine the traffic which is coming from all over these switches, then we need second level of switches, which are the distribution switches, which are collecting all the traffic from the access switch means if something wants to go from here to here in this first floor, maybe it can go like this, right? Sorry, it can go like this, as simple as that, right? And by the way, if these pictures looks intimidating to you, do not worry about it. That is what I'm saying. This is very, very simple. This is part of my switching fundamentals course. If you want, I can enable this on your profile, but Please try to understand that wireless is built on top of wired, right? So wired knowledge should be there. Basic switching, basic routing should be there, okay? And now, if we have so many buildings like this in a campus, for example, if you visit Cisco campus in Bangalore, there are eight or nine buildings very nearby in one campus. If that is the case, what is going to happen? We will be increasing this by one more layer, which is known as core. We are going to connect this building to this core and other buildings also to this core, right? To these core switches. Why do we do that? Why can't we connect with this distributions only? Believe me, there are going to be distribution switches with every building. And you, if you want to interconnect them, it is going to take lots and lots and lots of wire and those are going to introduce complexity. If we are good network designers, we want to have easy topology so that we can debug, so that we can troubleshoot easy, right? So that is why we are going to introduce this core layer so that all of my buildings can connect. And I'm talking about a huge network. It can be the case that in Delhi, Sports India has so many buildings, maybe seven or eight buildings, right? Why we are talking about this three layer architecture? Core, distribution, and access, because it is important. The most important layer for this course is going to be your access layer, because now the boss said to Anjali and Rahul that there should be no wire between this computer and this switch. And if you see the switch closely, inside the switch, you are going to see there are many opening and you are going to insert the wire inside this opening. And now boss is saying there should be no wire. It means that at access layer, we need to change something drastically, right? Because in this switch, only wire can connect. We need something which is, I don't know, really, really interesting, right? So just try to understand, we will be working pretty closely with the access layer. Maybe we need to introduce something else right here, which can understand wireless and which can understand wired also. And if you are from this background, you must be thinking, Mr. Vishnu, you are talking, are you talking about access point? Absolutely, I'm talking about access point, but we haven't discussed it because we haven't discussed the medium till yet. Overall, what we have discussed till now is that we have a big problem of connecting users without a wire. 
everywhere inside data center, inside our switches, inside our sites, inside of the campus network. This is the problem Mr. Mr. Rahul and Anjali has, right? And the second thing is that we have little bit idea about how the total campus network looks like. It's very easy, data center, campus, we branches, then we have connected them through a service provider. So that maybe the service provider can be, then we, we can connect over internet or MPLS, whatever you want, right? By the way, everything is explained. If you want to understand basic routing switching, SD-WAN, SDXS, everything is on the website present, right? But this is something different we are talking about. We are talking about wireless networking. Having said that, let's move to the next board to understand what do we need, right? Or what exactly we are talking about in terms of this medium. So now Anjali has taken this problem, right? And she has started working on that. So she's sitting in this campus, right? And she has this laptop and iPad. Really simple. And now here we have the switch. There is nothing between Anjali and the switch. With respect to the server, we are okay, right? No problem. The server is connected over this ethernet wire right here. And in server or in enterprise environment, we see IP cameras, we see printers, and we see so many things here, right? They can be connected directly to the switch because they understand wireless. Although Anjali's laptop also understand wireless, no pro, sorry, wired, right? But we are not interested in it. Anjali is saying, I want to connect to the switch without any wire. So we need to understand the medium. Here, the problem is very simple. Just wait a minute. Here, the problem is really simple. Although, because we have been seeing all this thing for so many years, if the server wants to send its data, which are 101010 and so on, right? It is going to place this data onto this wire and this data can go over this wire and can reach here. But here is the problem with Anjali's laptop or this iPad. The problem is we do not have anything here. We have air, how we are going to send this data, right? how my iPad is going to communicate with my enterprise network. By the way, now I'm not showcasing the complete enterprise network means router and switches. No, I am representing this complete enterprise network with just one green color cloud. Okay, so try to understand this is having MPLS network, data center network, everything. So if you want to go and talk to a server inside the enterprise network, then your path should be through the switch. And now Anjali is contemplating, Anjali is pondering, thinking a lot how she can send the data over this air, right? And this is invisible medium, right? How I'm going to send this data to this invisible medium? I do not know anything about it. If that is the case, we need to understand this invisible medium more. But before that, we need to understand what exactly it takes when two system wants to talk to each other, right? Anjali is busy in thinking. Mr. Rahul is saying, let her think. I am happy with connecting the wire to my laptop and want to, and I can easily access the server. Maybe the server accesses, the server address is x.x.x.x. Dot x dot x dot x. My address is y.y.y.y. Dot y dot y dot y. Very, very simple. Right? I can go to my application layer, maybe using any application. I am going to write hi. What is going to happen at transport layer? This hi will be getting source port. And destination port, as simple as that. This data will be taken uh, here to the network layer, and network layer is going to put the IPs here, source IP and destination IP, as simple as that. And then I will be having this data link layer where I have to put the MAC addresses, as simple as that. And then I will be going to the physical layer, which is going to take ones and zeros out from my network and my, my laptop and will be placing on this layer, right? This is how the communication happened on this wired network. Try to understand with respect to Anjali. Anjali can definitely uh, say uh, can produce high using any application. She is going to use the transport layer for the source and destination port. She is also going to use the network layer, right, for putting the source IP and destination IP. Maybe Anjali address is z dot z dot z dot z, right? But where is going to be the change? The change is going to be exactly at the data link layer, right? The problem here is. If we talk about physical layer, there is a huge problem. Anjali do not have any medium. She is having only air. Rahul doesn't have any issue because we know 802.3 or the Ethernet very well, without any doubt, without any problem. 
So what is the problem at the data link layer? So believe me, this data link layer is divided into two parts. One is LLC, the upper part, which is the logical link control. And the, lay, uh, and the below portion is your MAC. What is the meaning of MAC? MAC is media access control, right? And believe me, in wireless communication, the three layers are going to behave like same, right? Application transport network layer, they are going to be same. In fact, at the data link layer, if I divided them into the two part, divide it into the two part, the upper layer, which is the LLC layer, it is also going to be same in wireless network. What is the meaning? The job of the logical link layer is to take the data from network layer, which is the IP data, with IP header and the data, right? And give it to the media access control. It means that logical link control layer is going to be the same in wired and wireless because it is going to collect the data from the network layer. But here is the problem. The second part of this data link layer, which is the MAC, is going to be different, right? Because the job of the MAC layer is to give the data, right, towards physical layer. And in case of Ethernet, the physical layer is a wire or Ethernet. But in case of wireless, the physical layer is wireless. And that is why this second layer is going to be changed. Means if I divide the complete layer to network into two parts, the upper part is going to be seen in wired as well as wireless. The lower part is going to be changed. And we need to understand this. If I go back in time and if I talk about Ethernet, Right. If I go back in time, maybe around 1980s, believe me, at that time we used to have hub. If we connect hub with computers number A, B, and C, here this is A, this is B, and this is C. If this guy is sending, this guy cannot send at the same time. And that is known as the half duplex communication. Why? Because if this guy and this guy send at the same time, because this is a common medium, our current is going to collide with each other, right? I'm taking the example of hub. Why? Because this problem was in hub. We are, human beings are really, really intelligent. We just replace this hub with a switch and in switch, we do not have this kind of problem. Did you remember the concept of collagen domain, broadcast domain? If you do not, please see my fundamental switching course, right? The problem of hub was that it is a shared medium. If someone is sending, and if you send at the same time, there is going to be collision. Collision means that the data is going to be meet with each other, or there is going to be accident of this data, which is known as a collision, right? And if that is the case, this data is going to be disturbed. This data is going to be, uh, you can say, it is just waste data, right? That is why we are going to have only half communication. It means that if A wants to send this data to this hub, or maybe to B, or maybe to C, it needs to listen to this medium that whether someone is sending or not, right? And we call that technology or the technique as CSMA, carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. The meaning is, if there is a collision in the network, I need to resend it. And before sending, I need to listen that whether this medium is free or not, right? This is all about wired network, guys. And this is all about, we are talking about 1980s, 1990s, or maybe 90, 2000, right? Where hub was everywhere, right? CSMA CD was the protocol at that moment. But now, because, thank, thank you so much for the Mr. Switch, we do not need to use CSMA CD, right? So I'm just taking an example of the MAC layer of layer two in case of we are, if we are talking about 802.3 or dot three, which is ethernet, then if we go in past, we use CSMA CD, right? And that is the function of MAC layer. So data link layer exactly is divided into two part, logical link control and MAC layer, right? Most of the time as a network engineer in this era, we see only ethernet. That is why we see this MAC, and that is why we call the addresses at this layer as the MAC address also, by the way, right? But believe me, for every communication, you do not need a MAC address, right? For example, if you have one router here, if you have another router here, if you have connected these two router, and if these are the point-to-point -point links, you do not need a MAC address here. Point-to-point -point is a different technology together, right? It doesn't work on MAC addresses, believe me. It means that at data link layer, if we talk about MAC layer, media access control, 
we have different kind of technology ethernet is there point to point is there frame relay is there and wireless is also going to be there if that is the case the mac layer or the media access layer is going to be different for wireless and that is where we need to understand more because if you already know tcp ip well if you already understood ethernet or maybe the uh, now switching well right Believe me, you are good with respect to the network layer. You are good with respect to the data link layer, especially LLC and Mac, right? But to understand wireless, we need to understand about the Mac layer more, and we need to understand about this physical layer. And you can ask me, Mr. Vishnu, I am a good network engineer. Believe me, and I do not have much knowledge about these wires. But if you want to be good wireless engineer, you need to understand the physical layer because many of the things of wireless is dependent upon this. So. understanding wireless means you need to understand physical layer well understanding wireless means you need to understand half layer once again which is mac mac for wireless how media is accessed in wireless we understand how media is accessed in switching we all know about the protocol in that right in ethernet we have used address resolution protocol and so on right we need to understand mac layer well in case of wireless now as simple as that right now let's talk about what are the basic requirement of a networking system what is the meaning of networking system if two devices wants to talk to each other what exactly do, do they need believe me first thing first they need first thing i'll oh, just wait a minute sorry for this yeah so first thing first if the two devices want to communicate with each other they need right they need the device is itself right if you do not have this laptop and if you do not have the server how you are going to communicate with each other as simple as that and you must be thinking mr vishnu what is this this should not be the requirement we always have the laptop and server believe me this was not the case when we started the communication in 1960 or 70 right we did not have the laptop maybe we have some mainframe computer which were which were uh, uh, which, which 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 were just born at that point of time right first thing first devices should be there second thing medium should be there right and we are so habitual, habitual in seeing these wires in ethernet that we know that the medium is wire rj45 wire right or the cat cat6 wires we all know the third thing is going to be the standards and protocol should be there you cannot just send this data over this wire just like that until unless this switches understand them it means that there are some rules which are common in your laptop and in the switch which is the layer 2 right and that is standard is known as 802.3 which is your ethernet or switching right and now let's talk about what is going to be needed by miss anjali miss anjali will be needing this devices of course she has she has a laptop she has ipad and she has the server also which wants to talk to each other right does she has a medium no she doesn't have any medium she doesn't have this wire but what is the definition of this medium does medium only need wire can't i send my data over air we can and that is exactly the medium which you want to understand how anjali is going to send her data in this invisible medium right it is not visible to human eye then we are going to talk about it is not the case that anjali is going to just send the data into the air just like that no if she is sending the data into the air maybe the device although the switch is not able to understand this wireless data maybe we are going to put something here something interesting here we do not know what although you all know this is going to be access point right but we need some standards so that this intermediate device this a access point maybe understand these ones and zeros and those its standards are not going to be 802.3 because that is ethernet that is a different technology now we are talking about 802.11 which is for wireless we need to understand these standards also so now anjali at this point is very clear that whatever i knowledge has tcp ip it is good i should be having that don't doubt about it because at the end of the day the data will be coming from application layer to transport layer transport layer to network layer and there is no problem till there right irrespective of the fact i'm sending through wire or wireless these things are going to be same in fact the data link layer llc which is the logical link control which is going to take my data from network layer right it is going to be same the difference is the at the mac layer i need to learn some of the thing in the mac layer right and those are going to be my standards and protocol and the most important thing anjali wants to understand is this medium right this is what we are going to learn pretty heavily we are going to spend around 3 to 5 classes only in this medium because most of the courses 
in this wireless just leave this part right they just say electromagnetic radiations are there this is the frequency this is the wavelength but what exactly the meaning of how you are sending data how you are going to visualize that right it is going to be very important because there is nothing in front of you there is no wire in front of you <laughs> if we, there is an invisible medium you need to visualize you need to think how data is flow right going to flow believe me we will be visualizing that thing together right having said that it's it's been already 45 46 minutes right and if you have any doubt any problem although i'm just talking about some generalized thing till now right or general things till now but if you have any doubt any question please do ask i do not see any hand raise so the rules are simple or the protocols are simple uh, of this session or maybe the upcoming session if you have any doubt any question just raise your hand and believe me i'm going to answer it whenever i get a time right or at the end of the class i do not see any hand raise so let's move to the new board but till now i would like to take a pulse guys can you hear me can anybody please say i can see one heart thank you so yes, much yes we can are you perfect, sure? perfect, yeah. perfect 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 okay Hi. so let's go to the next board now we are into the business guys right and you must be thinking mr vishnu who is this guy and i will be talking about it do not worry. by the way if you are not able to read these red color text whatever i have written here do not worry this is not for you this is only for me so that i do not forget i just write some point about a board so that i do not miss anything okay so what is happening here anjali's main problem was right there were there is only three things to be required one the devices anjali has those devices now i have removed this corporate network at all because we want to understand the thing between the switch and anjali right so devices we already have the second thing is medium and anjali is right after to this medium to understand each and everything of this medium because she wants to be good wireless engineer right and the problem was how Anjali is going to send this one zero one zero one zero one zero whatever it her laptop has generated over this wire over this medium which is just nothing but filled of air filled up with air and believe me this problem was solved by this guy this one not now in 1887 i'm talking about 130 140 years back from now believe me guys we are talking about wireless networking now maybe it is just uh, a 10 15 20 years old technology for us but this guy solved this problem this guy showcased to the entire world that you can send energy between two devices and you must be thinking mr vishnu you're talking about energy we are talking about ones and zeros if energy can go ones and zeros can go because at the end of the day when one device send data to another device right we send maybe in case of ethernet we are sending current it is a form of energy nothing else if energy can be can go between two systems right this is a and this one is b right here if energy can flow between them your ones and zeros can flow between them so this guy whose name is mr hertz did one experiment and he has sent this energy over this medium without any wire without anything in just open air believe me that was the moment right and most of your new technologies most of your uh, whatever you do right internet satellite communication gps mobile phones everything is working on this one just one experiment which is done by this guy by the way there was another scientist who has explained that yes the information the energy can flow in the air but he has explained all the things theoretically this guy has done the practical in 1887 which was a life-changing moment for human for us right but what this guy did we are going to understand in the new board okay just wait a minute. so we are right here into the new board let's see what this guy has done so what we have here is we have two sheet of metal right and what this guy has done this guy has connected these two sheet and this guy is supplying some voltage so by the way guys if we need to understand uh, this wireless medium we need to understand a little bit about physics also 
and here the problem with the network engineer network engineer said no i would not want to learn physics believe me when i was reading all these things in my school days it was so intimidating to me right but now now i am in situation of thinking that where exactly all these things are used right because most of the guys say that we do not use anywhere in our life integration and differentiation that is why i do not want to learn them right and that is the proper reason right but now we are wireless network engineers also right and we all know that information is traveling over air in an invisible medium and if that that is the case we need to learn that and if you combine that knowledge with the practicals believe me it is going to be mind blowing i am enjoying it right and the only difference between me and you is maybe you haven't heard about this experiment or you haven't read about this experiment i just have read and i i found it really really interesting and mind blowing too so what this mr hertz was doing in 18 uh, i think 1887 right this guy has taken these two plates metallic plate and connecting them over the wire and is providing the battery here right or maybe the voltage here what is going to happen here the positive charge is going to be accumulated here the negative charge will be there right and if that is the case after some time when you increase this charges indefinitely believe me the distance between this is going to be getting charged or in physics language they call ionized but do not worry about all this term but what is going to happen basically here you are going to see a lot and lot of spark interesting it means that something has flown from here to here and that is what that is the electric current because once you have positive charge you have negative charge and if you are giving it a lot and lots of charge right then basically you are going to see this spark right here between the distances between these two things right but you must be thinking mr vishnu what is this experiment this happens we know about it the real magic happened believe me here so we have a wire in a circular form which is approximately 1 or 2 meters away from it or maybe 3 meters away from it and when this thing was happening right here we have noticed that there was some spark right here also really really interesting another spark it means that there is something which travel from here to here to 2 meter to 3 meter right how could this be possible there must be something which is coming out from this spark moving from here to here and reaching here by the way if you see this blue thing this is nothing this is just the open space here also it means that if i talk about this wire right something happened to this wire and of course current is flowing in this wire and which is creating this spark here also really really interesting how come it is possible that a thing which is placed after 2 or 3 or 4 meters from this experiment which is not connected to any current source or anything it has the current now on its own although in comparison of this spark this spark is was very less but it still there was a spark here right it means that the current has flown here it means that some form of energy from here has been moved to the other other part this guy has done this experiment this guy has sent the energy from one place to another place without any medium believe me there was no wire between these two this has changed how we talk now how we do networking now right really really interesting so if i if i go on to the next board right here now we have two gentlemen here right and now i am going to visualize this experiment little more so basically that something that energy was looking like this when this energy reaches here around this wire and by the way there was one just rule if you want to understand it means if across a wire if you create this magnetic field then current can flow inside this wire if you do not understand it it's fine no problem right but if you if you are thinking that how come the current is coming here then it means that there is going to be magnetic field around it which has generated the current do not worry about it at all if you do not understand magnetic field or current no worries you just try to understand that if a wire can have the current if i connect it to the battery there is no doubt about it right but by any chance if i create a magnetic field around this wire i can generate current in it right 
and this guy know that if the current is generated into this white wire it means that there is going to be magnetic field around it and who is generated this magnetic field? my experiment this is the magnetic field which is going from here to here by the way you will come to know this is not only the magnetic field this is, there is going to be electric field also which is going from this place to that place if you are not able to visualize do not worry about it you just think from this experiment there is some energy which is moving from these plates towards this coil or this wire the looped wire and it is creating current there also right very very interesting and this is going over this medium which is which is absolutely air based right and if you remove this air also this this form of energy can travel means a place where there is no air also right that place is your vacuum in vacuum also this energy can flow by the way and who is the second gentleman right here right the second gentleman name is mr maxwell and he has explained all these things whatever mr hertz was doing right 20 30 years back believe me i'm talking about 150 years this guy mr maxwell has explained all these things theoretically he has explained with his equations that energy can flow from one place to another without any medium right and he named these this energy as electromagnetic energy and by the way he also said that see there are uh, there are uh, energy coming from the sun also right sun is quite far apart from us you all know about it right but still we feel the heat we feel the energy which is coming coming directly from the from the sun which is far far away from us who is carrying this energy to us there is no medium also means if you talk about earth earth has the atmosphere there is a medium means there is air but after that if you see if you try to visualize sun and earth there is no medium also but still there is something which travel to us with this energy right <laughs> really really interesting and these guys said you can understand it well if you understand using understand using it a wave right do not worry about what this wave is we will be talking about it but these guys said although this is a form of energy because let's try to think these scientists have the same problem something is coming from sun right how we are going to study it right so they said you can study it if you can if you can feel if you can uh, make them or if you can understand using them a wave you can understand them very easily right although this is a, this is really a debate till now whether this light is a wave or particle if you want to really understand this just have a look at the double slit experiment i do not want to go into the physics but the whole sole point here is energy can travel right information can travel because if energy is traveling we can put information on top of it if energy can travel without the uh, or in the air or without the air in the vacuum definitely we can send data right and these guys has explained this using this little scary looking diagram where they have drawn electric field and magnetic field at 90 degree with each other so basically the the red lines you are seeing is the electric field the blue lines are the magnetic field do not worry about what these fields are but according to them they are saying why this energy is traveling without any medium they are saying changing electric field creates magnetic field then that changing magnetic field create electric field again magnetic field again electric field and that's how this thing is traveling i think you have read about it in this 11 12th standard but believe me you do not need to read because I can explain it because I have visualized it. I have read about it. But if I want to explain this electromagnetic waves, this is going to take six to eight or maybe 10 to 12 hours. If you are curious about it, just go and read about it, right? Because now you know the practical uh, uh, or practical application of this, right? Because in wireless, we will be sending the data over this wireless medium, as simple as that, right? So one thing, we do not need it. See, Anjali was worried about the medium, right? How is she going to send these ones and zeros? We do not need any medium to send them. But still, how I'm going to visualize them? Because at the end of the day, I have laptop, I have a switch. I need to make understand, I, I need to make my laptop understand these waves 
so that the data can now go into this energy uh, energy form or this wave form and i need to make my switch also understand or the device also understand this wave nature right or this energy really really interesting so overall we have been talking about this prop this problem have been solved 150 years back right and whatever the application you are seeing mobile phones so many things right those applications are just are just the result of all these experiments which is done by mr maxwell and mr hertz mr hertz was somebody who has proved that mr maxwell was right his equations was right right this is where i would like to end this thing and now i would like to go on the next board to make you understand what are the course prerequisite and what should be your expectations from this course and this is one of my favorite board right so there are many people here or maybe some people here who want to make their entire career in wireless right so let's suppose that journey is 100 kilometers believe me i am not going to walk with you till 100 kilometers right i will be walking with you till starting 15 to 20 kilometers only but these are going to be solid these are going to be solid foundations right once you have complete this solid foundation you can definitely run after this right but most of the most of us just want to add one additional knowledge because we are good in routing and switching we know uh, automation we know cloud if there is a case why not wireless also because future wireless engineer is going to be changed routing and switching is going to be the his basics he understands automation he understand cloud little bit of ai ml he understand wireless networking and so on right i'm not saying that you need to be expert in everything you cannot be because these technologies are huge but you should have basic understanding of everything and this course is going to give you the basic understanding of wireless if you get a wireless project after this course definitely you can do it why because your foundations are going to be so strong that whatever the requirement of the wireless project you are going to read it and those reading are going to be very easy for you okay this should be your expectations from this course and what about the prerequisite basic knowledge of switching and routing should be there and if you do not have that please ping me one on one to enable routing and switching courses in your dashboard right because this is something which is really really important having said that this is what i had in my mind and now if any curious question or any question coming to your mind related to anything please do ask and i am here for next 10 minutes anybody anyone so from a certification point of view mm -hmm. so <clears throat> after the getting you know oh, i mean completing this course so i mean can we crash uh, the ccna wireless at least ccna wireless i think see uh, i think this is the offline topic maybe we can we can talk about it but uh, passing a certification uh, uh, passing certification and having knowledge about uh, uh, something is totally different so maybe we can talk it offline also maybe you need to work a little bit more but for example if i talk about ccna wireless right the the book is going to take you around 8200 of hours right to complete it and then after you need to Correct. you need to learn something more right but here we will be talking about 12 to 14 or maybe 15 hours one and a half hour one hour 15 minutes per class 12 classes so this is not going to uh, complete your ccn believe me but this is going to be solid foundation so that if you read any concept in the uh, ccna book uh, for wireless it is going to be very easy for you mr berlin great yeah great yeah. thank you very much no problem mr prakash please go ahead mm -hmm. Yeah, so how we are guiding those electromagnetic waves uh, ah that then, is then... do not worry about it in this medium only we will be uh, spending around 4 to 5 hours right or 4 to 5 i will be talking about some antennas right and how hmm. basically those antennas are projecting this thing in a particular direction also there are some antenna who, who are basically uh, uh, can generate this electromagnetic waves right into a particular direction or there are antenna who can generate inside a, uh, a complete room different type of antennas and different type of radiation pattern we will be having one class specifically on antennas also do not worry mr prakash thank you okay anybody else any doubt any question okay 
So I think the first class was so basic for everybody that everybody means uh, I don't think there is a problem. But I would say, guys, please be a little bit curious about this diagram, right? Try to look on internet. This is one of the most important discovery uh, you can say because electromagnetic waves were there, right? But yes, they have produced them, so we can we can call that invention also because uh, we can see electromagnetic waves uh, uh, coming from the sun, but they have literally produced it uh, using this experiment, specifically this guy, Mr. Hart. So I would say, just be a little bit philosophical. Do not say or my uh, do, do not take everything as granted that yes, it works. Mobile phone just works, right? But how how my data is flowing, right, in the air? Just think about it. Because I want you to think about it so that you can visualize all these things in upcoming classes. Having said that, I will be meeting you tomorrow at the same time. Bye for now, guys. Thank you so much for being a wonderful audience.